We already know that the solids, liquids and gases are the three states of matter. Let's look at each of their features. A solid's particles are arranged regularly and packed together tightly. These particles can only vibrate. They cannot move around. They have strong attraction forces between the particles. Liquid particles are loosely packed. They are still touching but there are gaps between them. The forces between the particles are not as strong as that of the solids, so particles can move around each other. This leads to the particle arrangement to be random. Gas particles just move randomly at high speed in every direction. The particles are so far apart that there is little to no forces acting between them. When a solid is heated, the energy from the heat source makes the particles vibrate faster and faster. More and more vibration will weaken the forces of attraction between the particles, allowing them to move around each other, forming a liquid. We call this melting. A solid melts into a liquid at a certain temperature. This temperature is called the melting point. Energy has to be supplied for a solid to change into a liquid, since liquid particles have more kinetic energy than solid. If a liquid is cooled, the particles will move slower and slower, until eventually the force of attraction will be strong enough to hold the particles in a fixed position. With the particles packed together, this is called freezing, and the temperature at which this happens is called the freezing point. Funny thing is, all the freezing and melting are two different things. The freezing and melting point for any substance is the same. There are two different ways a liquid can turn into a gas. First is boiling. Boiling is when a liquid is heated strong enough for the particles to break free from the forces of attraction. The boiling point will be higher if the forces of attraction are stronger since more energy is needed to overcome the forces of attraction. Evaporation is different. Here the speed of the particles vary with temperature. However, at each temperature some particles will be moving faster than the other. I think you'll understand it better if I tell you the three differences between evaporation and boiling. In boiling, all particles get involved, but in evaporation, only the particles on the surface get involved. In evaporation, there are no bubbles. Water just evaporates into the air. But boiling has bubbles. And most importantly, boiling happens at a fixed temperature called the boiling point, but evaporation happens at all temperatures. Some substances have a melting and a boiling point so close that the solid turns into a gas straight away, avoiding the liquid state. This is called sublimation. The opposite, which is gas to solid, is called deposition or desublimation. An example of a substance that sublimes is iodine. When someone puts perfume, even if you are in the far corner of the room, you will be able to smell it. This is because gas particles can easily move around and they spread around. The spreading out of particles in a gas or liquid is called diffusion. If you are looking for a definition, diffusion is the spreading out of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Even in diffusion, different particles travel at different speeds. Here's an experiment to show that. Show you that gases move at different speeds. And so what we do here is we take these gases in their liquid, these substances in their liquid form, and we are going to dip each of those substances in cotton wool. And once we have done that, we then place that cotton wool inside this gas tube. We know that that substance will then evaporate inside the gas tube and so we now have hydrochloric acid gas present on this side of the gas tube and ammonia gas present on this side of the gas tube. Now well, as that gas evaporates we will start to see them, we will see when they meet each other because when ammonia reacts with hydrochloric acid it forms ammonium chloride which is a white solid powder or precipitate and so what we expect to see here is when these two gases meet each other we expect to see a white cloud form where these two gases meet and then eventually form a white ring 
inside this gas tube. It is important to do this experiment inside a gas tube so that these gases are not affected by drafts or wind through the room and so these gases are free to move as they wish and this shows us that gases are able to diffuse because they are in constant motion. have been able to move through the air that is inside this tube and also it has shown us that the ammonia gas has traveled a far greater distance than the hydrochloric acid gas which tells us that not only do gases move but gases move at different speeds. The main reason for this difference in speed here is that ammonia is a much smaller molecule, much lighter molecule than the hydrochloric acid molecule. Well, that's all for today. If you preferred it instead of a whack in the face with your textbook, then like and consider subscribing.